The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of CATV2, Oshkosh Community Media Services, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everyone, welcome to Ayan Oshkosh and Happy New Year. This is our first show of 2009 and we're happy that you're here. Um, we're going to just start out with uh, one hell of a topic. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> the show and the year. Um, in recent years, we've, I think, all heard an awful lot about pit bulls, um, breed specific legislation being done in some cities around the country and so forth. And uh, well, then the Michael Vick thing came into the news and we started hearing more and more of it. And in recent weeks, we have heard just a flurry of discussion here in the Oshkosh area about this very thing. Um, we should say the city has put forth, they're wanting to move forward with some kind of dog breed specific legislation. Um, what happened though is kind of unfortunate in some respects. Um, they put together a proposed ordinance change it got out into the media and then into the public sector and uh, from there that generated more than 1700 comments on the Oshkosh Northwestern's website and that's just attached to one of the stories there's more attached to subsequent stories so anyway um, we want to just state up front that it is a proposal only it's a working document but we're going to discuss it tonight anyway um, the, in talking with our public, um, our, our city's uh, health director, Paul Spiegel, he's indicated that they expect to have um, some kind of a formal proposal ready to go before the council, not earlier than February, and probably sometime between February and April. So that's kind of the timeline we're looking at right now. Um, he will come on the show. Uh, we've asked him to appear. He said he will, but only when they have a final document. And at that point, um, we'd like to have one or both of our current guests back. And uh, we're pleased to have them here tonight. Uh, to my left is Cheryl Rosenthal. She is the communications coordinator for the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And Joni Geiger, who's the executive yeah. director of the shelter. And um, so we wanted to have you guys here because when this all came forward, you guys really took a hit because Joni, mm -hmm. you were on vacation mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and um, the media came knocking on the door yep. um, yep. as we tend to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <surprise. laughs> not always at the best time. When the boss is gone. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. not always at the best time. And um, one of your staff tried to be helpful and things were not necessarily, as I understand it from you, right. not necessarily represented in the way that she yeah, them. I, she, so. yeah, and, and just to, to uh, speak to that, you know, I think what she was trying to explain, there was were, there were so much stuff out there, but what she was trying to explain, I think, is where the city was coming from and their ideas behind having breed-specific legislation, not necessarily that we endorsed it, but unfortunately the way the article came out, it sounded like we were. Right, so. and as a result of that, you guys got a lot of, um, nasty comments, yep, some we did. from around the country even, right. because mm -hmm. right. you know, it, all of a sudden the Oshkosh Area Humane Society is the only shelter in the country right. that supports yeah. this kind of legislation, you know, legislation right. or law. Right. So, or that all of a sudden we were a shelter that we were out to get the pit bull. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think, uh, let it be known that I think we are one of the few shelters that is a great advocate for this particular breed. And that is why we, we don't take a stand on breed-specific breed legislation because, uh, truth be known, any dog can bite. Mm -hmm. And does. And does, mm -hmm. exactly, sure. exactly. So, well, let's, uh, you issued, after that article came out, uh, the shelter issued a press release. We put that on our website. Thank you for doing that, by the way. You're welcome. And um, 
you know, we published it in its entirety, um, but just can you sum up for viewers, you know, who maybe didn't see the website or who sure. didn't read the paper, um, what it well, is? Well, I'll just, and I will, and because I, I don't have it with me, obviously, but but obviously we've never, ever been for breed-specific legislation. We, in fact, when this was brought up at the work group, um, one of the first things, because there was, there was a few of us there from the Humane Society, is don't do this. This is hmm. this doesn't work. It, it, you, you can't get people to comply. It, it, it's not fair. Um, it's it's so you know misunderstood and misconceived and so on and so forth. So the truth of the matter is is that the Humane Society has <coughs> never ever endorsed it. Never will mm -hmm. uh, endorse breed specific legislation. We are an advocate for all dogs, um, including this breed. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl's right. I, I have to say that probably um, our Humane Society in Wisconsin is probably one of the top three to five that um, places this breed. I mean, mm -hmm. people sometimes call us from all over the country asking us if we would take some of their pit bulls because they're having difficulty placing them in some of their other shelters. So, so we definitely are advocates for, for all dogs, but um, absolutely not. I mean, we, we would never endorse this. Okay. Well, let's, um, you know, again, we want to thank you for being here, especially because the document is kind of in a premature state mm -hmm. right now, you know. Um, but, um, and again, I, I want to stress that. I can't stress that enough. It is a working document only, and yet I think it's good that it's out in the public, you know, because uh, it's getting I agree. I, I think this is an opportunity for individuals to come forward and voice their opinion. Um, I mean, you can't expect an agency such as the Humane Society or the Health Department to have all the answers. And sometimes you need to hear from other individuals about their ideas and their thoughts and where are they coming from. And this is an opportunity for people to say, well, I think that's a good idea, or I don't think that's a good idea, or why don't they do this, or bring up some other questions. How are they going to enforce this? What are they going to do? Um, you know, or and look at other alternatives. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, because there are issues, there are problems, not necessarily with this breed, but there are problems with dangerous dogs. Sure, and and I think that's what we're talking about. At least that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about the history, if we can, as as to how this really kind of started. Do you know what the impetus for this was? Um, I, well, again, this 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 came from the health department, as far as you know, and. And obviously, the health department handles all bites. Um, they go through his department, through Paul's department, obviously. And there is a tremendous increase uh, in bite, dog-dog uh, bites, uh, and mm -hmm. people bites as well. And um, I think based on that, he was looking at some of that information and looking at some of these breeds of dogs that sometimes this is happening or occurring. And I think, um, now I, and again, I don't know if there was a current trend that there was mm -hmm. pit bulls involved. but. That would be my assumption. So I and yeah, and that's what we're going to ask him yeah. right. when exactly. Paul comes right. on too. Right. Um, Could I ask about the chronology? Did you know about the draft when the press called you and asked for a comment about it? Did did we know about the draft? Yes. I knew about the you, draft. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily Rhonda knew the specifics okay. to this. They have did you know it was a draft <coughs> only though? I knew it was a draft. No. Only. Okay. All right. This is a standing committee, a health committee. Have have there been discussions of it? The draft at their monthly meetings. Or? There, well, I don't, I don't know, think there was monthly meetings okay. as much as there might be like quarterly or three times okay. a year, this type of thing. This has been moving quite slowly and okay. just kind of trudging along as far as just getting everybody together. But um, I think again, this is part of a draft, and this is just again a working document. I, communities are doing it. Okay. Breed-specific legislation is happening in and around the country, and so. Um, so I think, you know, for a lot of people, it's a knee-jerk reaction to, you know, some of the problems that are out there, and it, it, it sounds like it's going to answer some of those issues, but obviously it won't. Mm -hmm. So um, to answer your question, Dan, I, th I think that um, it is a working, working document, and, I, and the fact that it went out to, and, and the reason that it's out in the public is because it was, it was put out by the health department by different entities, you know, the the uh, kennel club and the grooming areas and some of the uh, places that handle right, animals and veterinarians. to get input, mm -hmm. you know, to get to get their their ideas and thoughts on those things, and I think that's where that's a lot of this is coming from. Yeah. But it, it, you know, again, forcing discussion 
of it. I, I think that that is a good thing, mm -hmm. and, and you guys obviously agree. And, and maybe the city will, you know, uh, look at some of these 17, 1800 <laughs> <laughs> comments that there are. Right. There's an online petition going, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and maybe they'll look at some of those comments too and incorporate some of those some of those views by the way what is if you know and i suspect you probably do what is the official position of like the um humane society of the united states or the american humane association absolutely opposed breed specific legislation. okay both are both. opposed. Yep. Okay. Both. Both are yeah opposed. there there is an i cannot think of an animal welfare agency that would endorse it i there there isn't any okay all right well, why don't we get into the specifics of, of this thing and just start drilling into this. Sure. Um, you know, again, you guys took a real hit on this, um, you know, and that's unfortunate that people are thinking that you're in support of this. What specifically, I mean, it, it targets various breeds, um, you know, bull terriers, Staffordshire bull terriers, American pit bull terrier, American Staffordshire terrier, dogs of mixed breed or of other breeds than the above listed, which breed or mixed breed is known as pit bulls, pit bull dogs, or pit bull terriers, and then any dog which has the appearance and characteristics of being predominantly of the breed's bull terrier, or these other ones. Um, then the other restricted breeds include, and I don't even know how to pronounce some <laughs> of these, Doggo Argentino, yeah. am I pronouncing mm -hmm. that right? Canary Dog. Um, Presa Canaria. Okay. Um, and then Presa Malorquin, mm -hmm. is it? Okay, well, hey, I'm doing pretty hey, good. you're doing good. <laughs> I'm doing very well. You're hired. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, this one I'm probably going to fail on. Tosa Inu? Mm -hmm. it, what is that? I've never even heard of that. Well, Ivo, uh, the Shibo Inu, is, it's, it's a cousin to that particular breed. So what you're seeing here, Cheryl, is, and, and you know that dog fighting is on the rise, obviously. Mm -hmm. But what you're seeing here is the people who are doing these things, these are the breeds the, that they're using for these particular uh, types of activities, these illegal activities. And um, what, and I'm, I'm being premature, but what's going to happen, guys, is that if we see it all the time, we, we've seen the trends throughout, throughout the years that I've been in animal welfare, you ban a breed or you try to get rid of a particular breed, you're going to see another breed take its place. Mm -hmm. well, and that's what's happened is mm -hmm. they're banning pit bulls, so now they're bringing in different breeds that have some strong genetic tendencies, you know, to possibly be aggressive if they're taught that way. So that's what you're seeing here. So this is, this right. is what you're dealing with. Well, and that's, if, if I go back to when I started at the shelter, um, when I first, and that's uh, 13, 14 years ago, the dog that we saw the most at the shelter was the Doberman Pinscher and the Rottweiler. Mm -hmm. And you heard all kinds of bad things about mm -hmm. the Doberman and the Rottweiler. Ooh, mean dogs, you know, uh, biting dogs, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. aggressive. And then that went away. And it's like, well, what happened to them? You know, and, and, I, and for the record, the majority of the Dobermans and Rottweilers that we saw at the shelter, they were just very nice wonderful dogs, dogs. Yeah. wonderful dogs. And, and I, I was talking to Joni earlier today that uh, because of what I had heard about this breed, um, I was terrified of Doberman Pinschers. I had never met one, but I was afraid of this mm -hmm. dog. Yeah. And, and I think rightly so that, you know, if, if you're bitten by uh, a French poodle, are you going to be a little leery of French poodles in the future? <laughs> I and, certainly would be. You know, <laughs> so, you know, so sometimes the media can play a part in, you know, um, interfering with how these dogs are perceived also. Yeah. Um, Actually, I wouldn't be afraid of other pit, uh, other uh, French, French poodles. poodles. I, I just, because <laughs> I, I'm one of these believers that it is, it is the deed and not the breed. Yes, right. And, absolutely. and, you know, as you guys both said, any dog can bite. Mm -hmm. Right. And any dog will bite right. if if presented with the right set of circumstances. Right, that's absolutely right. correct. Well, and here again, I, Cheryl, you, you're aware that I do a lot of the education programs mm -hmm. for the shelter, and one of those is bite prevention, which I do through the Safety City for the Police Department. And one of the things that I always, you know, tell people is, even if you think your dog would never ever bite, all dogs have the potential to bite if put in the right situation. Mm -hmm. And I myself, you know, any of us, we're probably very nice people. We would never hurt anybody. But put in a 
situation where you needed to protect yourself, you may strike out mm -hmm. and bite. I have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so those, are, so those are things that people need to be aware that uh, any dog has the potential to bite. And, and to not just think, oh, well, there's a nice, you know, uh, little schnauzer dog or whatever breed of dog it happens to be and go running up to it. Uh, and some of it is a, a misconception held by people that dogs should just tolerate human attentions mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's a learning curve I think it's important that people realize that dogs have their limits whether it be a pit bull a German Shepherd a Rottweiler or that little French poodle mm -hmm. uh, so so by um, being aware and and learning how to conduct themselves around dogs and um, those educational pr programs are something that can help uh, people maybe feel a little bit more comfortable about you know some of these breeds. Sure. Well, even Dalmatians. I mean, as, as you both know, I, I've had Dalmatians for years. And, um, you know, every time, I mean, they're, they're great um, children magnets. You know, the oh, kids yeah. come up and, oh, Dalmatian, oh, Dalmatian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and every Dalmatian I've ever had or known has been great with people and kids alike. And um, and yet, you know, I, I hear adults saying, they're not good family dogs, are they? And they're this and they're that. And I have to try and dispel that myth. Sure. And, you know, how did that start? Probably somebody who got bit by a Dalmatian once upon a mm -hmm. time. Maybe a kid came up and yanked its tail or tugged on its ear. Right. You know, well, I'll tell you how poked it, it in the eye. My personal opinion on, on a lot of these popular breeds is supply and demand. Is what happens is Dalmatians, when they were very, very popular, Cheryl, they were bred poorly. And they, they bred the temperament out of them they, for a lot of these dogs because it was just, you know, it's like, oh, I've got a purebred, you got a purebred, let's get them together. And then they sell these puppies, and then these puppies have puppies. And what happens is that it's irresponsible breeding. Mm -hmm. And so you have, genetically, you have sometimes poor characteristics of the breed. And that has happened, in some cases, to the pit bull. It is a very popular breed right now. It is, we, it's very prevalent um, in our shelter alone. I just counted before we left, and I bet you we got six or seven pit bulls in our building. Um, you know, we only have uh, 35 kennels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's a popular breed right now. What makes it so popular? I, I, I you know, I, I'm confused by that. I mean, they've got sweet-looking faces, a lot of them mm -hmm. do. Right. As I'm a sucker for dogs. <laughs> you guys know that. <laughs> or any like dog, detail, you any got it. dog has a sweet yeah. face to me. But yeah. um, they, they're popular because they're they're cool looking. They're they're. I'll be honest with you. For a lot of people, not everyone, but for a lot of people, um, it's it's uh, an enhancement of who they are. You know, I've got a pit bull, therefore it mm -hmm. makes me look, you know, like a very powerful person. Uh, they're a muscle breed. Yeah. yeah. You yeah know, so exactly. they, you know, they're powerful, but the, yet they're compact. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I like really big dogs. They're not, they're a big dog as far as, in a compact body. Mm -hmm. you know, right. in a compact body. Exactly. So, so, and they're, and because they are, again, so prevalent, um, you're seeing so many. And I'll be honest with you, we've seen some problems in Oshkosh with, you know, in parts of Milwaukee, the, the breed is banned. So we have some bad breeders, poor breeders here in Oshkosh that are selling those puppies off mm -hmm. to Milwaukee. Um, so there's there's some undercurrents of some not so good people out there, um, again, exploiting the breed. And legislation like this is not going to do anything, I don't think, um, to stop those people. Legislation like this will drive it underground and it'll make it worse than it ever it is. Okay. Because it's the responsible people that own this breed. They're not the problem. They're not the issue. They're the ones that are doing all the right things with this breed. Socializing, um, spaying and neutering, taking it to classes. They're doing everything they need to do to make that a great family dog and a great neighbor dog. Um, it's the folks that don't. It's the folks that don't socialize it, don't spay and neuter it, that use it for guarding tendencies, that use it. You know, mm -hmm. Those are the people that we're having issues with. Well, why don't we, um, you know, why don't we talk about the, what they're proposing mm -hmm. with respect to this. I mean, this yeah, entire could, change yeah. is 31 pages, yeah. mm -hmm. but that affects mm -hmm. a lot of different things. And later on, we're going to talk about the good things that the proposed changes in this, because it's uh, the whole ordinance mm -hmm. is being overhauled. Yes. Right. Um, and this is just one aspect of it. So maybe we can talk specifically about this portion of it, what it's 
looking to do as far as restricting sure. these breeds, what it will require if you have these dogs, and, and you know what you like about it and what you don't like about it, if, if there's anything you do like about that aspect of things. So, specific? I like yeah. nothing about it. Okay, yeah. there we go. <laughs> right. Well, let's right. talk about what, it's, what yeah. it says. Okay. Um, you know, go ahead. Oh, I thought you wanted to. <laughs> well, I, you know, you I go, talk so you, much here no, that... <laughs> we, do, we do, too, and honestly, we can kind of get carried away, and, and, you know, so please, you know, ask away, but, All you right. know, anything that you want to comment on. Well, I mean, some of the things that it's requiring um, is any person who may own, possess, harbor, keep, or maintain a pit bull dog or any other restricted breed of dog shall annually, on or before the end of the year, license the dog. Well... All dogs and cats are supposed to be licensed, so that's not a biggie. Um, I'm trusting you don't take exception to that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. we, we, All right. there, there's a that's, part we like. Yeah, that, there's one part okay. you like. It's the rest. <laughs> yeah. um, current vaccination for rabies, current city license, those things are all good things. Um, neutering or spaying documentation of sterilization from a licensed vet shall be presented. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about you know requiring spaying and neutering? Well, you know, I've kind of changed my views on this as far as I would love to see everything spayed and neutered. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, we come from a shelter environment, so we see the sheer volume of animals, and then obviously, you know, addressing it through spaying and neutering is key. The other thing is, is that we personally feel that um, dogs that dogs that are spayed and neutered are healthier, and they have less aggression tendencies because they're not producing mm -hmm. testosterone, they're not producing hormones. However, mandating it. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, the animal's weight, age, coloring, and any special identifying characteristics. Um, I'm not sure. That just seems to kind of be there by itself. I'm not sure what that is meaning. But uh, then there have to be two four by six color photographs of the dog. I, I guess you have to present that to the city. Is mm -hmm. that what they're suggesting? Mm -hmm. Proof of a surety bond in a sum not less than $100,000 for any liability incurred by virtue of injury inflicted by said dog. Um, said document shall name the city as co-insured. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of conditions here for maintenance of that dog license if it is granted. Um, and then we get into other things here. Um, you know, the pit bull dog or any other restricted breed of dog when outdoors and unattended must be locked in an escape proof kennel approved by the health services division or the humane officer. I guess that would be you folks. Yeah, who, Minimum. No, no, no. no, no. Okay. So you know. Who no. would that be? Who would that be? Um, well, they do have two humane officers um, on the police force. So okay. I'm assuming that's okay. who, they're, talk who okay. they're talking about. I do have, um, I have two people who have gone through the course, but they're not appointed okay. humane officers. All right. Okay. So, so we don't have any from the police department yep. then. Yep. Right. Okay. It has to be the police department. All right. Minimum standards shall include the following. Fencing materials shall not have openings with a diameter of more than two inches. Gates within such pen or structure shall be lockable and of such design to prevent the entry of children or the escape of the animal. Such pen or structure must have a minimum dimension of five feet by ten feet and must have secure sides and a secure top. And it talks about the bottoms being secure if it's not secured to the side. Um, it has to protect the animal from the elements. Well, that's a good thing. Um, the owner shall have posted at each possible entrance to the owner's premises and on the pen or structure where the pit bull dog or any other restricted breed of dog is kept, a conspicuous and clearly legible sign made of metal or plastic, fluorescent in color. Such, <laughs> <laughs> such sign must be at least 8 inches by 11 inches in rectangular dimensions and shall contain only the words restricted breed of dog in lettering not less than two inches in height. I mean, it goes on and on and on, and I'm not going to read all this because, right. well, you know, again, it's a working and, document. And but that's it, one of the reasons why we're against breed-specific legislation, because how do you enforce this? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. How do you enforce this? And how, you know, we, we have that challenge every day at the Humane Society when we get dogs in. We get purebreds in, we get mixed breeds in. What are they mixed with? Well, do you know. How do you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, um, one of our staff people has a boxer who does not have cropped ears. Somebody seeing that dog could say, oh, I think that's a pit bull. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you don't. You In, enforcement is, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, this is just, I mean, I'm, you know, it's way over the top. Yeah. I mean, this oh, yeah. is just yeah. way, way over the top. I mean, they talk about actually, you know, if you want to walk your dog, you have to muzzle it. Well, you know, talk about in increasing some aggression tendencies, you know, of walking through the muzzle. Of, you know, there's just, you know, it's really unfortunate that, that things have come to this. I mean, there are some key things in here, I think, and again, when we talk about dangerous dogs, dangerous dogs are already dogs that have done some damage mm -hmm. to other animals or people. Um, whereas I think that if you're going to allow a person to keep a dangerous dog in the city, some of these things may apply, but, but not just because of a breed. Well, and I guess that's my feeling. Yeah. You know, I mean, I certainly don't want to see any dog biting another dog or, God forbid, biting mm -hmm. a person. Right. You know, in particular children, because that's where we hear so much mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of some of these bites. Um, but, you know, none of us wants to see any dog bite anybody or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, to, to just target certain breeds seems right. a little silly. Well, I think, Joni, you had some really interesting statistics about dog bites uh, across the country. Oh. Um, uh, that I think if, if, if all of these bites were administered by a pit bull, you know, that would be a different, make a difference. Mm -hmm. But right. I think some of the statistics, it would be almost impossible. It, it is almost impossible. I mean, they talk about the fact that you, you can't accurately, you know, from a br breed perspective, I mean, you, you, you can't accurately know what breed you're talking about. And the other thing is that half the bites don't go on reported. So how do you know whether they're, you know, the majority of these are happening from pits mm -hmm. or Rottweilers or poodles or your German shepherds, carriers, yep, you know? Yep. I mean, so so they talk about that as well and they talk about the fact that there's, um, there's very little license compliance across the country. You know, I mean, there's most cities and, and counties don't get complete 100% compliance and the fact is is that you don't even know what your ratio of dogs are breed wise you know so there's there's a lot of inconsistencies here as far as just like what is happening i mean there's there's dog attacks from labrador retrievers from from wiener dogs for heaven's sakes you know yeah. so i mean you know it to to say that one breed is specifically responsible for this is is absolutely ridiculous. The, the truth of the matter is, as we know, it's a very powerful, strong breed, mm -hmm. and it is, it is truly, without a doubt, the most exploited breed that's happening right now. Right now, I mean, people are using this breed for all kinds of illegal purposes and, and taking advantage of this wonderful, beautiful, social nature dog, right. um, um, and, and it, it's unfortunate. Yeah. It's well, just unfortunate. I think if people would look back, um, if you remember the program Little Rascals, mm -hmm. remember the dog, the cute little right, white dog mm -hmm. with a, with <laughs> with a the, white oh. spot? Yeah, you're young. Oh, yeah. oh, I remember. I can, I can identify with that. <laughs> He's a pit bull. Yeah. Okay. He's a pit bull. That cute little cuddly That cute thing little dog <laughs> that was always with Spanky and his gang yeah, and, okay. and chumming around, that's a pit bull. Yeah. Can't think. Yeah. Yeah. It was well, white, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. White yeah. with a little... With a little circle yeah. around it. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, that's the pit bull. Now. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved that dog. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. What happened? Yeah. yeah. You know. The breed got exploited. The breed got exploited. <coughs> just the way, just the way the little, you know, all the other. Like uh, Dalmatians did and German yeah. Shepherds. And, and the little Taco Bell dog, because mm -hmm. now we're seeing a lot of Chihuahuas, mm -hmm. you know. Well, because Spuds McKenzie, too, that breed. Spuds, yeah. there yeah. you go. Yeah. So your position is that this is really unenforceable with all of these ridiculous Absolutely. things they have in it? It, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Extremely and, difficult. And the police people would be responsible for the enforcement yeah. of this right. yeah. because we have no empowerment and, yeah. and the yeah. burden I mean really truly the burden to put that on law enforcement is, right I mean it's difficult I mean it's really really difficult um, there's got to be a fiscal note attached to this for the police department if they're going to take over this thing this could be a full-time job for <laughs> well <laughs> many I will, people I, I will huh? tell you one of the things that we had talked about and of course we've been pushing this for years and yeah. years and years is is a full-time Humane officer okay. in the city of Oshkosh. Okay. I mean, what, what a, I mean, because we know there's issues. We know there's animal yeah. issues, and not not breed specific issues, but we know that there's animal problems in mm -hmm. Oshkosh. There are dangerous dogs. There are bites that occur. There's uh, there's non-compliance to rabies and licensing. Mm -hmm. What what a wonderful opportunity to bring in a humane officer full time. Okay. Um, and boy, I can tell you, it would keep them mighty busy. There would be, but again, from budgetary constraints, it would be difficult. So they really are not going to increase probably 
personnel to, to deal with this, which means it's probably Im oh, I'm sure they're not impossible to, to do, huh? They're, they're, no. Yeah. What percentage of dogs in the city are not licensed? If I had to guess, mm -hmm. they tell you that there's, uh, nationally, there is a dog, in, one dog in every three households. Okay. So depending on how many households okay. the city of Oshkosh has, you figure it out. How many dogs were licensed last year? Okay. Probably around 4,000. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to do a dog survey of the city of Oshkosh <laughs> we'll to identify door to door. all of the dogs before you could, you yeah. could even begin to do this. Yeah. It, it it really is difficult. It's it's a, you know, when you read it out loud, doesn't it kind of sound silly? Well, well yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. <laughs> I mean, I, she's going on and on and on. The size of the lettering, the bonds. I mean. But uh, I I think in all and I, I I do need to say this. I have to say this, um, in in defense of Paul and and Lynn Lawrence and and some of the people with the city, the fact that, you know. And I don't know what Paul's intent was, and whether it is to push this through or not, but I can tell you he's getting people to talk about this. Uh -huh. Because it is an issue. Uh -huh. Dangerous dogs in Oshkosh are an issue. Dog bites are increasing. Uh -huh. um, we're seeing more and more people, unfortunately, being irresponsible in, in these situations. And so what's happening, and Cheryl, you guys hit the nail on the uh -huh. head. People are responding. Uh -huh. People are for the most part, it's my opinion that people are not happy with a breed-specific oh, legislation. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But they're also giving alternatives to, like, what can we do about the mm -hmm. situation? What can we do about the problem? And so there is some problem solving that's going on. So there are other things that can be done to address some of these issues. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, really happy to mm -hmm. see that. And as I said before about regarding Paul and Lynn, they have done a tremendous job with a lot of the animal laws in, in Oshkosh. They are, the city of Oshkosh has far better, greater laws addressing cruelty um, ag addressing housing here in the city of Oshkosh as compared to the state. So, so they are protecting animals and people. Um, I'm not, obviously I'm not yeah. agreeable to the breed specific legislation, but, it, but you know, they're, they're talking about things like tethering, um, like y that, you know, people should not be chaining their dogs out for huge lengths of time. Mm -hmm. Chaining can increase in aggression. A, a dog that's chained is 2.8 times more apt to bite a person than a dog that isn't. So, uh, you know, they're talking about leash laws. They're talking about proper housing for outside dogs and, and protecting those dogs. So they are doing a good job in that area. But again, I think this, this other situation has been... You know, good laws don't work unless they're enforced. Right. I mean, everyone becomes cynical. And we have so many laws in this country and so many rules and regulations that, you know, the givers make mm -hmm. all these things. But mm -hmm. you really become cynical when, well, no one's paying any attention to that one. No one's. Right. I walk mm -hmm. in Menominee Park all the time. There's dogs running wild all the time. Right. I have never seen, you know, one of those police people who were, you know, supposed to take care. It's, it's just common. It just happens. Yeah. Well, does. that's illegal. How come they're not enforcing it? How could they possibly enforce that? Yeah. I, I think what's probably going to end up happening if something like this gets passed by the city council at some level is you're going to have neighbor, no pun intended here, but pitting against neighbor. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have you a know. pit bull. Looks like a pit bull to right. me. I'm going to yeah. call the police. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. That type of thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, some of these things, we don't like to see the breed specific legislation. Yeah. But as a citizen, I also want to be able to know that I can safely take my dog for a walk and not be charged by somebody else's dog, yeah. whether it be a black lab or a German shepherd or a little dog coming out and rushing onto the sidewalk to me. I have that right to walk the city, you know, with my dog on a leash, on an appropriate leash. With your poop bag. With my <laughs> poop bag. <laughs> And my rabies tag and my license yeah. on my dog uh, and not feel threatened. Yeah. And I have had it happen to me where I have been walking my dog and all of a sudden out of nowhere comes a stray dog. And to me, rather than having the breed specific, I'd like to see more enforcement of the dog at large or the uh, dangerous dog. Or the leash law. The you know. leash law. Um, you know, your dog is supposed to be under control, and I can't tell you how many people in have said to me, well, I never put my dog on a leash. I have him under control. <laughs> um, 
So your position is <clears throat> enforce the existing laws or rules rather than impose this. But the truth is they're not enforcing the current rules and regulations. It's difficult. Yeah. And like you said, go door to door. How many dogs yeah. are in the city of Oshkosh? Yeah. You know, you don't know. Quick, hide your dog. They're coming to survey <laughs> our house. <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be the next thing. They come out to check for illegal sump pumps or something right, else. Right, right, You know, th this will be, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you got a dog. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the hearing on this in the council come but you know, February or March on this? this I, I just really fail to believe that this will go forward. Yeah. I, I just, I, I truly do. I, yeah. I will be very surprised. Uh -huh. See, I think that this, as it is, may not go forward, but I think some kind of dog breed specific legislation you will do. go forward. Really? I, well, wasn't Mark Roloff, our city manager, quoted in the paper as saying that, you know, this is... Um, something that other communities are doing and this would solve some of the problems in Oshkosh? What, I, don't, I don't think it will solve the problem. It will make the problem worse. Yeah. Well, um, and think of the impact on shelters. Think of the impact on our shelter. You know, if, if Dan's got a pit bull and, you know, he's not willing to comply to some or of these Or he things, can't. Or can't, yeah. can't afford to. <laughs> That'll be another thing. But, um, you know, so what's Dan going to do with his pit bull? He's going to bring it to me. And if I can't well, I can place a pit bull, but boy, you better meet all these requirements. But and w what's the likeliness of that? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like Dan's going to come, or you're going to come in, and you're going to adopt that dog, and you're going to do all those things that you're supposed to do. Um, the shelter is going to be just flooded with this, with these types of breeds, and we're not, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to place them. Well, you're going to end up euthanizing them, well, of course and we are. you know, some people out there who are in support of this might say, well, good, you know. We, we need, to, one thing we haven't discussed is you need to put it on the owner. The responsibility mm -hmm. belongs to the owner of the dog, whether you have a black lab, a French poodle, mm -hmm. or a pit bull. You have to put that on the owner. The owner has to be responsible for his own dog. And that's, that's but it does come down to enforcement, Dan. You, yeah. Then you need to, you know, you obviously, if you've got an issue, and your dog's constantly running loose, then let's address that. Yeah. And you know. All the things right. Cheryl yeah. listed are right. on the owner. Yeah. Right. It's just there's well, so many of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, and, and you're so right, Joni, because, you know, we don't even take our dogs to the dog park. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not knocking the dog park. I think off-leash parks are a great thing. Mm -hmm. But again, it comes down to the owner. When right. we have gone out there with the dogs, um, you know, dogs come charging after the dogs. You don't know. A, what they may have, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I don't know that that dog coming at me and my dogs has the same level of veterinary care that I insist right. Right. our dogs have. Exactly. And um, I don't know that it's got its rabies shots. Mm -hmm. I don't know what other diseases it might have. And I don't know if it's charging because, oh boy, another dog or mm -hmm. more dogs and we can play, or if it's going to get into a dog fight. Right. And the really sad thing about it is many times there's no owner to be seen. The dog yeah. is, I mean, that's a big park out yeah. there. Yep. And they just, yeah, you can let your dog run off leash, but, you know, you should be somewhere should be, near it. You know, it's kind of like taking you know. your toddler and letting him loose in Sunfield Park. You know, yeah, so I don't, I, I, we risk. don't go. Yeah. It's you know? risk. Yeah. And, and, and that's a shame. And, and instead, they and run in the yard. And unfortunately, this type of legislation, there's so many good pet owners out there. There are so many people who care about their dogs, who get their veterinary care, who have their rabies tags, who have their dogs licensed. And those are the people that are going to be punished by this. Right. And the other people are, well, I'll just keep my pit bull in the basement. Right. And I won't let anybody see them and I'll bring them out at 2 o'clock in the morning when nobody's around or whatever. Um, that isn't what we want. You know, you, you want people to be responsible and be a responsible dog owner and and no matter what breed of dog it is, get the veterinary care. Get the, you know, license your dog. Mm -hmm. um, let's move fast forward. Let's let's say we're in March, and or April or April, and the council's meeting. They've got this up for a final vote, and it looks like it's going to pass. And one of the council members turns to the Humane Society and said, "Give me an alternative. What would you come up with?" You mentioned earlier existing things, but they want a little more. How far would you be willing to go if it looks like this is going to pass? Um, 
Well, I think that's one of the reasons for the compromise with the, the a good canine citizen. Okay. I, I don't know if you've, you're aware Let's of that. Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah. That's but in the amendment? Or? That's in the okay. amendment. Yeah. It's right. in the proposal because okay. one of the things when Paul was in his discussions, when they were introducing this, and, I, and that was one of my greatest arguments was like, you can't do this to people who are responsible pet owners who, whether they have a bully breed or not, you, you, it's, just, it's just not fair. There has to be something for them to be exempt from something like this. And then that's where the good canine citizen came in. Okay. And, and, and in retrospect, by my saying that, um, I think there was a, a misconception about people saying, well, she's involved in mm -hmm. this or the Humane Society's involved mm -hmm. in this because that was their alternative. That was what they suggested that we do. That that was just thrown on the table to say you have to allow people some mm -hmm. out in this, right. this. What are the elements of this? The canine the, good citizen. Yes, yeah. please. Uh, canine good citizen is um, something that you can take your dog through that um, it's very basic. Um, it's good. it's uh, through the uh, kennel club, and okay. you, you, you do it's a, a series of. It, it shows that your dog is well mannered. Okay. Um, it would, let's say that I was going to take my dog through Canine Good Citizen. He would have to be able to, I would have to be able to hand my leash off to you and leave the room. Um, my dog should be able to do a sit stay. Uh, another dog should be able to pass by my dog with no reaction. Um, I think there's, there's a couple meetings of the dogs that, you know, to see if your dog can can tolerate sure. so there's, viewing so there's some, other dogs. You know, so basically it's some kind of measurement to see that your dog is social and well behaved and well mannered. Would this be sort of mandatory then? If you wanted if you to be had, exempt from this. If yes. you wanted okay. to okay. not do all, all right. this other stuff. Okay. What dog could, realistically though? <laughs> I mean, I mean not okay, my dog. come on. <laughs> if, if you put a dog in a, you have a dog sitting and staying and you walk another dog past, what dog is going to just sit there and not react? I mean, isn't that a little ridiculous? Um, what do they mean by react? You know, yeah. pant, yeah. bark. Yeah. I mean, what? It, it, the, they're they're actually it's the kennel club who actually um, the Oshkosh Kennel Club. The Oshkosh, any kennel club. But okay. The kennel club certifies this, and I think that was their point in okay. the newspaper when the kennel club spoke about you know we're not sure that this is the right measurement, and maybe it's not. Yeah. But um, again, it was thrown out by me, and I will take I'll take the heat on that to say, gosh, give give some people mm -hmm. something, something they can well, hang, or some measure their hat on, yeah. you know, you know. So that's kind of where we were coming okay. from. And and the canine good citizen is used primarily for people that want to take their dogs into area nursing homes, into hospitals. It's in part of I think a therapy program. Part of a, well. a pet therapy uh, program. But you know so what? Still, guys even one of those dogs can bite. You come up and you grab that dog's tail or yep. or a kid Any. tries to, you know, get in the food bowl. If if a parent walks away and the child crawls over or walks over to the food yep. bowl and tries to grab the food while the dog is eating, they're very apt to get bit. For yeah. sure. That dog still has all dogs still have the potential to bite. And and I think it's to the degree, you know, of you know, how, how would you how would you enforce this? Enforce what? Cheryl wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> is that crucial? Uh, enforce the this the, and the canine thing. How, how the we canine good citizen. Yeah. Well, here again, um, Cheryl calls the police and says, "I have a pit bull." Okay. <laughs> okay. The police show up at my house. I can whip out my canine good citizen I, form. I, um, I, I don't know how they yeah. would enforce it. I mean, it's just the same problem again, isn't yeah. it? Have uh, has the Humane Society talked to the police department? Have you spoken to Chief Groyal about this? And uh, since it's his personnel who's going to be responsible for enforcing this, if no. this, I, okay. I really haven't. I don't know how they're. I really don't know yeah. how they're going to. Because I, I agree with you. I, th I think that there's going to there's going to be just a tremendous burden on the police department. No, they've got their hands full right yeah. now trying to figure out how to call deer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Between deer and dogs, uh, they're going to have their hands full. Um, we could change the name of the police department. We could. You get any suggestions? <laughs> well, I don't know. Animals Anonymous or something? I don't know. Whoa. <laughs> um, so as far as some of the other, um, is there anything else on this specific dog-specific re uh, regulation that 
you guys want to talk about? No, just that, uh, you know, again, we want to go on the record, Cheryl, okay. that, that we, we just do not endorse this. Yeah. We never will endorse this. And, and if really comes push, push comes down to shove, and this does go before the mm -hmm. council, I'll tell you, we will be there, be there in huge numbers to oppose this. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I am glad that the general public is standing mm -hmm. up and speaking up and, and letting you know, letting the powers to be to know how they feel about right. this. Well, so. well, I know that some counselors have gotten, you know, emails and, and comments from people in uh, in other places that don't live here, certainly, but um, I, I agree. I think that those council chambers will be flooded like they have oh. never been mm. flooded before yeah. if, if the number of comments attached to these stories is any indication. Right. Right. I don't, you know. I, I personally don't need to be protected from pit bulls. We need to be protected from dangerous dogs no matter what the breed. And I think that's what this should address. Right. And irresponsible owners. And, and irresponsible, irresponsible owners. owners. Because who creates a dangerous dog? It's true. <laughs> the owner. Okay, timetable here. The, you have these amendments we've talked about. Uh, will there be, what's the next step? Will let me, tell, let me tell you how this works. Okay. The, the work group committee will meet again and they will, and Paul will bring forth all the yeah. comments, the, okay. you know, those all 1700 <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, and, and so they'll get a feel for how everyone is feeling about okay. this and then the the proposals will be gone through again okay. and you know it would be my hope that at that point this one's thrown out okay. this BSL is thrown out will there be public hearings on the discussion of the proposed amendments and if so and where? then what well and then what happens then Dan is then it will go to the health department board okay Okay. Okay. And then the health department board has to, I don't know if they sanction it or whatever, but they go through advisory, it. They're advisory, but they, would, they can right. make, move it forward, right? Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so. then I believe at that point it goes to a council workshop. Okay. And then after so, the workshop it goes to a vote. Okay. So this could still go back to the drawing board yeah, yeah. several this times. This will go back to yeah. the drawing board, yeah. I guarantee Well, you. this will go back to the drawing board, but even after that, it, right. it'll, it, there'll be many it, opportunities I, I to believe find that's how it works. Yeah, I just hope that the times and discussion and places where these middle steps that people know about it. Very often people say, well, gee, we didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. well, well, unless it's not open to the public, and that's the thing. You know, we, yeah. I mean, I don't know how they this may be, be open closed. to the public, but I don't know that they'll be open for public discussion. Yeah. Well, you know. certainly the, the health committee, the advisory committee, when it got to that stage, that would be a public meeting, right? Oh, that would. Yeah, would it? yeah, yeah absolutely. So. so people need, yeah. and we need right. to know when those meetings are going to take right. place. Right, yeah. Huh? Right, and people need to come forward with their... Yes with their thoughts. Good things in the overall ordinance change, uh, the chapter, what is it, chapter six? six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I noticed one of the things is they are proposing raising the, the um, rate of licensing from $5, which it's been at for as long as I can remember. <laughs> mm -hmm. $5, I should say, if your pet is spayed or neutered. neutered. Um, they're thinking of raising that to $7. And mm -hmm. I, personally, I don't think that, I don't I have I think that's any, still a deal. It mm -hmm. is considering what it is in some uh, some mm -hmm. other communities. And, you know, if I can just make the point, too, that, you know, licensing, it's not just about, oh, complying with the law. It's a way for if your pet gets lost for your dog to find its way back home. It's no different than having a, an animal microchipped or having an ID tag on the animal. Right. Because if it's picked up and it goes to the shelter, you guys That's how can, we find them. Sure. Yeah. That's, right. that's how we get you. Right. Yeah. You know? So um, yes, and there there are some wonderful things in there. They're 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 um, increasing some of the um, the standards for the housing, the outdoor mm -hmm. pens and situations. You know, um, something that got real popular the last couple of years are these igloo type plastic mm -hmm. kennels. Um, they don't contain the heat. They don't. They're not insulated. They're insulated from the bottom, but not around. So, so they're looking at some of those things. They're looking at tethering for long periods of time, and you know, um, just saying, you know, this is not. You shouldn't be tying your dogs out for for long periods of time. You have to have shade. You have to have water. You you have to meet these basic standards. And again, this is gonna this is gonna increase the quality of life for the animal. So, th so this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so there, th there's a lots of good things in here as far as you know addressing some of those things. Um, of course, a lot of that's already on the books. Yes, some of it is already on the books, right. and, and some of it is just you know making it better. Mm -hmm. yep. Adding some wording to it. And, right. and here again, people, I like to believe that there are a lot of people that don't intentionally endanger their pets. Um, 
but if, a, if an animal is being housed incorrectly, this is an opportunity to correct it, mm -hmm. to have, you know, to find out how should, if you're going to keep an animal outside, mm -hmm. how, what is the proper housing? Mm -hmm. um, what can I do to make it better for my pet? Of course, Joni and I would like them all to be in the house. Uh, <laughs> Mine are. But, yeah, <laughs> mine are. So, but, but for those animals that have to stay outside, we want to make sure that they have, you know, the proper shelter. Could you share with our viewers a couple minutes on patterns, changes in the shelter, some of the new trends, what's consistent, what's changed continuity-wise with, with... Well, I think what it, one of the things you see is obviously, you know, popular breeds. Okay. Um, we'll see this a lot with... Um, it, it's interesting because you talked, what, what is that little Chi-Chi movie that's out now? Hotel Chi-Chi or something? Yeah, or I don't know. But, but <laughs> you know, it's, it, when you see these things, you know, it's, it's interesting because the general public mm -hmm. actually buys into it and they go, you know, I want to go out and buy myself a Chihuahua because it was so cute oh, in that it movie. Was so cute. It was so darling. 101 Dalmatians did that. So mm -hmm. we, see, we yeah. see that okay. in a trend. Um, a lot of things that we see is when a breed gets popular, obviously, um, is just the shelter gets full of them. So we you have more pit bulls because pit bulls is a popular. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So and everybody, oh well, I, I want to make some money. So right. I got a pit bull. I'm gonna I'm gonna breed them and okay. I'm gonna make some money. And you know, instead of having three or four puppies or five puppies, you know, you might end up with a litter of twelve. Well, and that's one of the things that that is addressed in here is like if you are going to be a breeder in the city of Oshkosh, which technically is not allowed unless you get a license for it. And because we see these, these back, I'm going to use the word backyard breeder, mm -hmm. but these yep. are the breeders that are, you know, um, they're in the city of Oshkosh, they're, yeah. they're residential, and they're breeding dogs in their garage. And they're selling these dogs, they're not paying any tax on them. Um, and they're they're getting some pretty nice, you know, the, you, you know these these designer breeds that right. the, these little poopy poos and <laughs> they're coming up with all yeah, these new breeds I, I now. Mean, it's well, ridiculous. You know, the you know, teddy bear and the, the teddy bear. You know, yeah, I mean, the and and you see the these <laughs> get real popular. I mean, it's just amazing, and <laughs> people are getting four or five hundred dollars a puppy. You know, sometimes more. I know. I I heard of someone up in the Appleton area who got like nine hundred and some dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for one of these, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a labradoodle or whatever, yeah. but yeah, th those know, are. I know again. somebody that paid more than that. For so, one. so my point is, is that, um, is that right? Is that fair? Is that you know, should that? I mean, it, first and foremost, if you're going to be a business, you need to, you should have business standards. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you should be licensed, mm -hmm. and you should be paying tax, and you know, you should be putting out a good quality of of product, whatever right. you're selling. Even if you consider this, I think the term is hobby, hobby, hobby breeder. Breeders, mm -hmm. yeah. it, if it's a hobby, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't make a profit off of most of my hobbies. And if I do, I need to report that to the government. And, you know, I think that, that there needs to be some control. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I cited a couple of things with Joni that when I was a little girl, we were going to get a puppy. Mm -hmm. And we called up a breeder because we wanted a particular breed. And uh, we wanted a little French poodle, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and um, we were told that they didn't have any puppies, that there was, uh, they were taking the names of possible homes for these puppies, but until they had so many names, they would not be having any puppies. So the puppies were all spoken for before they were born. And I thought, oh, wow, isn't that a great idea? But you don't see that now. You see all these ads in the paper. If people would look in the paper and look at how many animals, go on Pet Finder and just go through all the thousands of animals that are looking for homes. Do we really need any more puppies or kittens? Yeah. And, and but I, I do want to say that we, I am all for good, responsible breeding. Exactly. I, I love the fact that there are there are really good people out there that are still breeding for, genetically breeding for temperament, you know, for, for wonderful dogs. I mean, we we want to see these purebred dogs continue, but we want we want it done well. Mm -hmm. And and the people that I work with for breeders are wonderful people and just like Cheryl They're breeding says, for health they and, breed in yeah. health and temperament and they breed only when their puppies are spoken for. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, but again, we see, unfortunately, we see the majority of people that are just trying to make a fast Dogs work. that are being bred that have hip dysplasia, dogs that are being oh, yeah. bred that have, you know, other 
generic uh, Generic, genetic, yeah, genetic. <laughs> thank you, generic. generic. I can't. Well, they are genetic. genetic yeah. uh, you know, diseases, and and you don't want to see that. Uh, so, I mean, who doesn't love puppies and kittens? But who wants to think about puppies and kittens without homes? Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, in in our remaining like couple of minutes here, um, since we are taping this in the middle of winter, at least it seems like the middle. <laughs> it's been going on forever mm, here. Um, real quickly, some some cold weather outdoor good. Pet tips. Go for it, Cheryl. Uh, she just wrote an article <laughs> on it. So. Just wrote an article. One Read thing: the don't let them freeze to the sidewalk. Right. Don't yeah. let them freeze to the sidewalk. Um, I want to know how that happens. One <laughs> one of the things that you need to do is uh, check your dog's feet. You know, uh, the snow can get clumped between their toes, and they can get frostbite in between their toes. Cats and dogs can suffer frostbite of their ears. Uh, and I don't know if skin, belly, skin, belly, just yep, like tail, just like us. Um, wind chill. Think about the wind chill. Um, a lot of times, people will tie their dog outside and then forget about them. You know, it's cold out there for them. Put a sweater on your dog. Uh, be sure and check your driveway and your sidewalk and your garage for any antifreeze. Antifreeze is deadly. Even a tiny little amount can kill kill an animal, um, a cat or a dog. And they're um, attracted to it because of the, it's the very sweet, sweet tasting. Yep. It's sweet tasting. Very good. Um, the other thing, even though you know you like to take your dog to the grocery store with you, it's not a good idea to leave your dog in the car, even in the cold winter, winter and summer. Those two extremes. That's just too hard on them. Leave your dog at home. Um, be sure and wipe your feet, your pet's paws off because they may be salt. Uh, I know that here at the shelter, we've got salt on the sidewalks right now, so we need to, you know, make sure that we get that off. Because what do pets do? They lick their feet. Uh, and so that can burn and can also cause, you know, upset tummy. So some of those things. Um, and don't let your cat out of doors. Ca yes. You know, cats really suffer the most oh, when God. let outside. Um, we I've seen cats come into the shelter with their ears gone, with parts of their tail gone. Uh, their paws are totally frostbitten. Uh, they'll c try to crawl up inside a motor of a car to keep warm. Uh, if you live in an area where you think you have a lot of stray cats, it sounds hokey, but pound on the hood of your car before you start your car. Um, I, I, my husband was, lived on a farm and they had that happen. And um, they're just trying to get warm. The very best place for your pet in the winter is in the house with you. All right, excellent. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, bet. Thank you. Yeah, it's too bad it uh, had to be on such a bad, bad piece of legislation that's being proposed, but hopefully we can kill this thing <laughs> and, and have, them, have them tweak it so that it addresses all breeds. Right, all breeds. so that and, it you and know, irresponsible owners. Them. So Exactly. But we'll have you back if this does move forward. You bet. So yeah. Thanks very much. You bet. Thanks to the crew, thanks to Dan, and thanks to you at home. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.